So a little 175, some sevens at the top. Fire when ready, Judge Sarah. Ready, begin. This is a case of People versus Mendez. Officer, go ahead and have a seat on the witness stand, please. Your Honor, just for clarification, I want to make sure that there are no other witnesses in the courtroom. I don't believe there are. All right. Okay, no other witnesses are present. Officer, state and spell your name for the record. Claire Walker, C-L-A-I-R-E Walker, W-A-L-K-E-R. Thank you, please proceed. Before we begin the hearing, I just want to add some language to count one to comport with the language of the penal code. I have submitted the corrected complaint. We will make that correction in the file then. Thank you, Your Honor. I have written that in and I will again, I will sign it. Thank you, Your Honor. Counsel, waive arraignment on the amended complaint. Yes, Your Honor, enter plea of not guilty. Waive reading and advisement. Yes. Ready to proceed? Yes, thank you. Officer Walker, good morning. Good morning. Can you tell the court where you are employed, please? Yes, sir. I am employed as police officer with the Tustin Police Department. How long have you been a police officer with the department? Over seven years. I would like to ask you about an investigation you were involved with on November 17, 2007, around 2.40 a.m., did something catch your attention as you were on patrol that night? Yes. And uh, describe what it was that you saw, please. My partner and I were driving eastbound on Maple in our patrol car when we saw another car driving south on Jackson. The vehicle began honking its horn at us. I saw the female driver point down the street on Maple where I saw a male subject running south. When you saw him running, did you take steps to see who that person was? Yes. Did you ever have contact with that man? Yes, I did. Do you see that person as anyone that you recognize in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you point out for the record where that person is seated and what he is wearing, please? He is seated to my left wearing the jumpsuit. May the record reflect she has identified the defendant, Your Honor. The witness has identified the defendant, Mr. Mendez. When you contacted the defendant, did the female who was in the car that you saw, did she come to your location after that? Yes, she did. And did she tell you anything regarding the defendant that you had contacted there? Yes. What did she tell you? told me that she was in her bedroom watching television when she heard her window being slit open. She then saw Mr. Mendez stick his head through the window and look around. He then looked directly at her. Your Honor, I object to the characterization that the witness saw my client as lacks foundation and calls for speculation. Move to strike that portion of the answer. Sustained. Did the witness identify the person that she told you had put his head inside the window of her bedroom? Yes. Same objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Did she identify the same person that you have already identified as the defendant? Yes, she did. Where she saw the man in her window. Was it a house or apartment that she lived in? It is a house. She was visiting there for the weekend. Okay. Who was she visiting? She was staying with her uncle. Did she say if the window was open or closed that evening? She told me that it was closed and secured. All right, you testify that the window was slid open. Is it the type of window that slides from side to side? Yes, it does. Did she report anything in regard to how the window could be opened if it was secured? Yes, she said... Objection lacks foundation, calls for speculation. Overruled. She explained that all a person needed to do was push the window open. Now, she said while she was in the bedroom, the individual you have identified as the defendant stuck his head all the way in. Yes, he did. And she made eye contact with him in the bedroom. Correct. Objection leading. Sustained. After they made eye contact, what did she do at that point? She screamed. The defendant asked what was happening and then immediately fled from the residence. Okay, now after she screamed or yelled, what did she immediately do at, thereafter? At that point, she got up from the bed, went to her uncle's bedroom and told him what had just happened. They both walked outside and saw the defendant running down the sidewalk. 
did she say whether or not she knew the defendant prior to him sticking his head inside of her window? That was the first time she had seen him. Did she say whether or not she gave him any permission to enter the residence? She never had given him permission. All right. She got her uncle. And then what did they do after that time? After she woke up her uncle, they ran outside and got into her vehicle. They began to drive around looking for the defendant. They lost him somewhere between the residence and Maple. They made a turn on Maple. They then found him again walking on Jackson. Okay. Was that the point in time when they saw you or did they see you later? That was much later. Okay. Did you also interview the uncle? Yes, I did. What is his first name? It is Daniel. Did he identify to you anybody whom he had been chasing? Yes. Okay. Who did he identify? Mr. Mendez, the defendant. Did he tell you if at any time during the chase he had any contact with the defendant? Yes. And what, if anything, did he say occurred during that initial contact? The uncle approached Mendez and asked him why he broke into the residence. Mendez told him that he was drunk and lost. What happened then? The victim's uncle told him that he was going to call the police. The defendant ran away and he was yelling that they were not going to catch him. Your Honor, I object to that testimony as calls for double hearsay. I move to strike anything that the witness is saying that my client said. Overruled. After the defendant said that nobody would catch him, what did Daniel do at that point? That's when they got into their vehicle and that's when they observed our police unit. That's when your contact began? Yes. Did Daniel say whether or not he knew the defendant prior to this night? He had never seen him before. Did he say whether or not he gave the defendant permission to enter his residence? He told me he never had given him permission. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. Cross-examine. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> now, what time of night did the woman in the bedroom first hear anything with her window? The call came out at 2.40 a.m. She said it was several minutes before that. Okay. So in the middle of the night, early morning? Correct. All right, now she reported she was in her bed watching TV, is that right? Yes. Do you recall the layout of the bedroom she was sleeping in? Yes, somewhat. We have a diagram right here. Does that look familiar to you? Yes, that's her bedroom. Counsel, what exhibit are you showing the witness? I am showing the exhibit previously marked as 13. Okay. This is the bedroom, but I believe the doorway should be on this side. When you say the doorway, that's the door to the hallway or the interior of the apartment? That's correct. I believe this was a hallway. And you see the furniture drawn on the diagram, correct? Yes. The bed would be in this portion of the bedroom. The TV was on a table or something against this wall here. Now, this woman told you that she was just staying the night there. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. She was visiting. Was she from another state? Where was she visiting from? I believe she possibly resides in another city in Riverside County. So she was only there for the evening? The night or the weekend, I don't recall. Did she tell you how often she visited her uncle? I don't recall asking. Did she tell you how many times she had stayed in that bedroom previously? I didn't ask her that question. Did she discuss what she did immediately before she went to bed? No. And did she tell you whether or not she remembered opening or closing the window that night? The only thing she told me was that the window was closed. I didn't ask her if she had opened it earlier in the day. How did she know the window was closed? Because she explained that she heard it being slid open. Before she went to bed, she observed that it was closed. Okay, she actually inspected the window before she retired to bed? That's correct. All right. And that's what she told you? Correct. Now, did she tell you what she was watching on television that evening? Objection, relevance. Overruled. No. Okay, now the TV was on when this person allegedly stuck their head through the window? She told me she was watching television. All right, were there any lights on in the bedroom? I did not ask her. What size television was she watching? I don't recall. Did you observe the television set? Yes. Can you give an estimate of the size that you believe it was? Objection, relevance, your honor. Overruled. I don't remember. All right, now she reported that she heard the window slide open. Is that correct? Yes. What did she do when she heard the window slide open? She turned to the direction of the window. 
Okay, now you said she turned to the direction of the window. How was she positioned in the bed? She was lying down. Her head was near the west wall, her feet pointing towards the east. All right, was she facing east before the window slid open? Towards the TV. Okay, let me ask you this. Is it possible that she could have been laying on her side and not really facing east? Objection, calls for speculation. <sighs> Overruled. She told me she was laying on her back. Okay, I guess your testimony here today is that she had to turn her head in order to see the person whose head was in the window. Is that correct? Objection. Misstates the testimony. Sustained. I am asking you, if I have misspoken, please clarify. Can you repeat it again? Your testimony is that she had to turn her head to see the person coming through the window. Is that your testimony? She heard the window slide open. That's when her attention was drawn to that direction. She saw the defendant stick his head inside the bedroom. She had to turn her head to see that. Is that correct? Objection calls for speculation. Sustained. Next question, please. Did she tell you how long she had been in bed? No. Does she wear any type of corrective lenses? I don't know. Okay, did you ask her that? No. How old is this woman? I would have to look at my report. You may look at your report to refresh your recollection. 37 years old. Do you see the furniture depicted on the diagram? There were other items, but I don't recall. Was there any furniture in front of the window? I don't recall seeing anything. Were there curtains on the windows or anything like a window covering? I believe there were curtains, but I am not sure. All right, and did she tell you whether those curtains were open or not when she went to bed? No. She didn't tell you? No, she did not. Did she give you a description of that individual that was at the window? Yes. All right, what description did she give? Well, she told me it was Mr. Mendez. Did she give a description of the individual that poked his head through the window? All she said was that it was a male Hispanic. She didn't give any information in terms of hairstyle, facial features, or anything like that? No. Okay, and you never asked her that? No, she already identified your client. Now, when she identified my client, was he in custody at that point? Well, we were chasing him, and they were directly behind him. They were present when we took him into custody. Now, was that individual running or walking? Objection, Vegas, the time. Sustained. Well, this woman and her uncle walked outside of their house. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and once they got outside, they said they saw a person. Isn't that right? Correct. What was that person doing at that moment when they walked outside? I don't recall who said it, but one of them told me he was walking swiftly. Okay, I believe your testimony was that the uncle told you my client was very drunk that night. Is that correct? He appeared to be drunk, yes. And he also told you that my client was drunk and looked lost. Is that correct? Objection. Misstates the testimony. Sustained. Now, were you in a marked patrol car when you were chasing my client? Yes. You were in uniform? Definitely. All right. I presume you ordered him to stop? Yes. And did he? He stopped, yes. Did you have to draw your weapon at all? Objection, relevance. Overruled. I don't remember if I drew my firearm or my taser. Okay, well, you drew a weapon of some sort. Yes. All right, you didn't have to shoot the taser, is that right? No. Okay, now I presume you ordered him to the pavement. Objection, relevance. Overruled. Yes. Okay, did he immediately comply? No. And when he did not comply, what did you have to do? Objection, relevance. Overruled. Go ahead, you can answer. After we ordered him in both Spanish and English, we had to push him down to the pavement. Okay, when you say push him down, did you tackle him? Definitely not. Did you handcuff him? Yes. Once he was handcuffed, did you notice anything about his condition? Other than sweaty and breathing hard at that time, no. Did you eventually notice the odor of alcohol? Yes. Mm -hmm. How quickly did you notice it with him? It was several minutes later that I noticed the odor because we drove back to the residence. Your Honor, I would like to make a motion out of the presence of the jury. Is that something we can do at the break? Yes, I just wanted the record to reflect that now. That's fine. Redirect. Officer, let me ask you some questions about that. Did you notice the smell of alcohol or was it your partner who noticed it first? I don't know if my partner noticed it prior to that. So the two of you never talked about his level of intoxication? 
Not at that moment. How would you describe the defendant's demeanor once you noticed either the smell of alcohol or the objective signs of him drinking? Watery eyes, slurred speech. And the odor of alcohol. Yes, that's correct. At any point after you got him in the back seat of the car, but before you get him to the station, was he ever standing outside or anything? I don't believe so. He was only seated in the back of the vehicle? Yes. What was his demeanor while he was seated in the back of the police vehicle, if you recall? I believe he was quiet. <laughs> Once you got back to the residence, did you then do anything with the victim and her uncle? I had them show me the bedroom. Did they identify the defendant while he was in the back of your patrol car? No, they had already identified him earlier.